chains holding them down. All right. Some people say they're free, but you see them trying to be, they say one thing and they're doing another, but they're under them with the lips, but the heart is far from the Lord. Create in me a clean heart. God, renew a right spirit with them. I just thank God today. Truly, I bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. I bless the name of the Lord because of what God yes, is to me. I don't know what he is to you, but I know what he is to me. Right. And I thank God for what he's done for me. Not today, but every day. Thank you, you know, and I thank God he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I just thank God once again for us coming here. I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for everyone that have a mind thank to be God here Jesus. today. Thank God for you, Mother. Thank God for the man, the deacon. Thank God for overseer, Potter, and Mary Lady, Danielle, Mary, all the bishops, the pastors, everyone. Thank God for you, First Lady. Truly, it's good for us to be here. That's it. I'm here to let you know Come on. God would give his angels charge over us right, to keep us. In all our way. It's good for us to be here. It's good for the angels of the Lord to be kept. It's good for us to experience God's power. It. It's good for us to know who we can run to. Yes. The Bible said a righteous, you know, talk about the name of the Lord is a, a strong tower. And a righteous, and it said, yeah, anybody can go there. The righteous run into it. The people that's living right can run into it and they are safe. We just thank God today, truly. God is a good God. And while you're standing, we're going to go to the Word of God. Yeah. Not going to be before you long, but we're going to go to a few portions of scriptures here. Yes, oh, my God. God is good to each and every one of us today. Yes, oh, we're going to turn to the book of Psalms, the 46th chapter of Psalms. We're going to read 1 through 3, and then we're going to read 8 through 11. Amen. Psalms, 1, 2, 46, chapter, verse 1, 2, 3, and then we're going to skip down to verse 8. 9, 10, and 11. We just thank God. Truly, God is good. Yeah. We're going to start Psalm 46 and 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Yeah. Therefore, will not we fear, mm. though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? Yes. Though the waters are of roar and be troubled. Look at this. Though the mountains shake, shake with the swelling thereof, Salah. Look at this, an A verse. Come. Look at this. Behold the works of the Lord. Behold the work of the Lord. What else it says? What desolations he has made in yes. the earth. He has made wars to cease Look at to this. the end of the earth. Yes. He breaketh the bow and he cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Look at this. Be still. Be still. And know that I am God. Yes. I will be exalted among the heathen. Wow. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Look at this. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. I like what the ten verse said. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We just thank God for the reading of the word. We're going to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, as we come, God. Oh, God, before you right now, God, as we open up your word, God. Lord, I pray right now, God. God, let your word, God, find each and every one of us. Give us the strength that we need, God. Lord, let your word fill us up, God. And Lord, we pray, God, right now, help us, God, to know we have the victory through your word, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray, God. Lord, let your word have free course, God. Lord, in this place, God. And Lord, let it find a resting place in each and every one heart, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank God. We thank God. Amen. As we look at the word of God, I'm going to take from my topic today, real briefly. God is your strength. All right. We're living in a day and time that as much is going on in this day and hour. We see, we hear and we have experienced the day and the time we're in. So many times we hear about, you know, even with, with the, the system they're placing, all the money that we hear that's been borrowed and been sent to different countries and, and all of the billions and millions of dollars that's going out. And you know, you can hear things like that. And you know, sometimes you can be frightened. You can say, well, who's gonna pay for all of this? You know, is all this gonna be left on us? How, how we gonna be able to deal with all this money we just handing out, we just giving out. You know, and you know, we hear the reports 
over and over through the media. You don't know who to trust, who not to trust. You don't know, you know, you know who's giving you all of the truth or who's giving you part of the story. See, a part of the story is not the whole story. With everything going on, people of God, it can be to the point that we can find ourselves, that we can find ourselves being weakened by the pressures of life and the pressures of this world and the news that we hear. But I'm here to let you know today that we coming with the good news, the good news of the gospel, that, that God is the same yesterday, he's the same today and forever. God does not change, and we thank God that he doesn't change. And David, you know, he give us encouragement. He give us, you know, let us know that who God is. So many times when we're going through life, you know, we got to be reminded of who God is in that situation, in that circumstance. That, that circumstance is not going to tell you who God is. And you know, that circumstance, gonna, if you don't watch it, it's going to drive us to a point to where we're going to make some, some mistakes and we're going to make some decisions that we shouldn't be making. But I'm here to let you know the Bible tells us that God not give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. You know, so many times people can be anxious and upset by everything going on. They see the, the prosperity of the wicked, and, and people don't even go to nobody's church, and, and they get cars, and they get houses, and, and you see how, you see like they flourish, and everything is going right for them. And what's going on with me? I'm giving my tithe. I'm praying, coming to church. I'm doing everything I can to serve God. Oh, but I'm here to let you know, but our hope is not in the politics, not in the, the system. It's not in it, nothing that, that, that the man has set in place. Our hope and our future is for our trust in God. That's why it says in Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to our own understanding, but all thy ways to acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. We got to know in spite of what goes on that, that even though the economy it seems like it's going out of, it's not going right and we can see that we got the chaos. You know, we look at, we look around and we say, wait a minute, every time I look around, we're dealing with inflation and, and, and inflation seems like it's running rapid and, and, and we hear them trying to fix things with all the intellect that we have in our political office. But I'm here to let you know, but we have to put our trust and the only one that can bring us through these situations, right. through these trials. That hope and trust has to be in God. Right. We got to know what the word of God said. And we got to know that David is saying in, in Psalm 37 and 25, he said, I have been young, now old, and yet I have seen the righteous forsaken Lord see begging and bread. Right. That's what he said. And we got to know what Paul said in Philippians 4 and 19. He said, but my God should supply all your needs according to his riches in his glory by Christ Jesus. God is our strength. That's the one I'm sure that. And I like what it says in 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always have an all sufficiency in not something but all things may abound to every good work. Right. It just give us the assurance of who is taking care of us. Right. It gives us the assurance that our strength comes from God. Right. Our ability to survive and it's our, it comes from God. Right. Everything that we need as Paul said, I can do all things uh -huh. through Christ yeah. that strengthens me. God is our refuge. Yeah. That's who he is. God is the one that's going to help us. God is the one going to meet every need that we have. He's the, our sufficiency. He's the one that's going to constantly make sure that we have what we need when we need it. Right. God is the one that we put our hope and trust in. God is the one that we look to in times like this. God is your strength. Don't look for strength from no one else, no other place. God is your strength. And we got to know, God help us. And when the enemy come in like a flood, God, 
Oh, when the enemy come in like a flood, when the enemy try to overtake us, when the enemy try to make us feel like we're nothing, try to break us down, but the power of the Spirit of the Lord, that's what it, it will lift up a standard against it. God, we know you're going to give us that strength when we need it. That's why the power said, Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's why, and thanks to God, we got to be careful that we enter into this case. We got to make sure we come in here with some joy. We got to make sure that we have joy. We got to make sure we have joy because that's going to give us the strength that we need. You know, the power said, we've been man tour for the night. See, that's, that's going to get us through those, those night times. See, that's the thing about it. in night times, thanks to God. We you know how it is. It gets dark, you can't see. But I love God. I love God and what he's able to do because even in the dark time, God sees. God sees where you are. He knows your, your, your pain. He knows your, everything you're dealing with. In the dark time, even though you can't see in the dark, God sees in the dark. And God knows the dark moments in our life. He knows what we're facing. He knows the hurt. He knows I feel like we feel weighted down. God knows and God will give us the strength that we need in that time that we're dealing with. God is able. He's our refuge and strength. He's our refuge and strength. That's what we need in this hour. Oh, because the, the world and everything going on work, it can bring you down. It can wear you down. Every time we look around, we see mass shooting. We see police chases. We saw there was a police chase yesterday. As frightening as it may be, my 18 wheeler, as we I saw one of the, the DPS guys had 8,000 pounds coming towards you. That was a guy that got hit. He said he got hit so hard. And he was saying, I can't believe that I'm here to tell a story. He got hit so hard, but he was able to talk about it. I really didn't see no scratches that much, but I'm going to let you know, I know he went to the hospital. I know they checked him out, but he was talking about how the impact was. But God is a strength in the midst of all. He said, he just held on to the wheel. Can you imagine saying that an 18-wheeler coming at you full speed? I'm talking about at an excessive rate of speed. God, give us a strength in this hour. We don't know when the enemy is going to show up. We don't know what's going to happen. You, we don't know who he's using in this hour. People, I saw they stealing oxtail. I mean, people doing all kinds of things in this hour. A thousand dollars worth of oxtail. I mean, yeah, they doing everything in this hour. Stealing that. That was a guy. They said it was some, 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 some control, some substance on that that he shouldn't have had on the 18 wheeler. So you got this going on with that. Over here, you got something going on. You just don't know what the enemy going to do. How he going to use people? I remember back in the day when Jerry Carroll was, some people probably don't know, Jerry Carroll was, uh, you know, hair products was, was something uh, uh, prevalent. It's people used it, you know what, they were stealing that. So people would steal anything. Right now they're stealing weed material. I mean, they steal everything now. Right. They're stealing anything they can make a buck off of. Yeah. And you can hear this, and people can get frightened, and they can feel like, I, I can't even come out of my house. But I'm going to let you know, all you need is to know what God is able to do. The Bible says he's a very present help in trouble. 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 Don't you know there's trouble all around us? Don't you know there's opposition all around us? Even though you don't think it's trouble, there's trouble all around us. I'm here to let you know, sometimes people focus in the front when they're driving. But I found out, to me personally, I'm talking about me, that I better ch I always check my, my, my side mirrors. And I check my rear mirror. Right. Because so many times I got to drive for that fella behind me. I'm here to let you know, trouble is all around us. Many times I had to slow down or speed up to keep the person behind me from coming in and having a crap that probably would have impacted somebody's life or maybe my life. You gotta be knowing in this hour that God will give us the strength to survive. And as our God will sustain us. And that's the God that I love. This is the one that David was talking about. You know, David say he's a very present help in trouble. How many do you know that you can call somebody when you're in trouble? People don't want to talk to you when you're in trouble. I'm gonna let you know, but the person, you know, that 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 God that David talked about, he said, you can call him. 
in trouble. You can ask him for help in trouble. You can know now you ask him in help that you can receive the help from him in trouble. So we don't get caught up in everything that the world, that is. I'm not saying don't look at TV, I'm not saying don't pay attention to headline here, but don't let that get into you, your spirit, to where you stop trusting in God, to where you stop looking at what God is able to do in the, this troubled time. Because the Bible tells us in John, he said, he said, in this world, that's what he said. He tells us that this world, he said, this world, he tells us that we're going to be many, there's going to be so much trouble. He said, he said, this trouble, we're going to deal with trouble. We're going to deal with tribulation. We're going to deal with all kind of things. But he said, be of good cheer. That's what he said, be of good cheer. Oh my God, he said, be of good cheer. Why did he say be of good cheer? He said, because I have overcome the world. He said, I overcome the world. And see, that's the thing about it, because he's overcome the world. Don't you know that we have him? He's our father. We his children. We are able to overcome the world. And the Bible says, love not the world, nor the things of the world. He said, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer. And I thank God that he gave us that word. I thank God he let him know that his presence, see, you know, in the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy. He promised that we would have his presence. He promised that we would have his power. He promised that, that we would be able to stand in his hour. You know, even though it looked bad, it's in the second verse, therefore will we not? We have fear. Although the earth be removed, we see so many things going on. Oh, how the world, we see, you know, storms, and, and we see all kind of things that we never experienced. You know, we see what's going on in this hour. Oh, but we got to understand that God is controlling everything. That's nothing that God is not controlling in this hour. It says here, he said, not fear, though the earth be removed. Oh, my, look at the situation. It tells us how great it can be. Though the earth be removed. Yeah. Oh, in the, though the earth, look at that the earth be removed. Come on. Look at what it says. It said, and though the mountain be carried into the midst of the sea. Right. Oh, how much farther can you go with, with, with showing you why you gotta be with your mind? How far does the word have to go in detail to show you who in control of everything? Is it though the water? You gotta understand though the water thereof roar uh -huh. and be troubled. Uh -huh. Though the mountains shake and swell it thereof, we gotta understand that, that God will give us strength in the midst of it all. all right. God will give us the ability to stand. And after we done all the stand, we continue to stand in the midst of it all. Yeah. The river, He will give us the peace that we need. And the God, the word of God is that, that that's why we're to keep our mind stayed upon him. For he said he would keep us in perfect peace. You know, but we got to do our part. You, we got to know who he is. We got to know that God that's a strength. We got to know he's that refuge. We got to know what he's able to do. We got to know as he taking the dead, talk about the water and, the, and, the, and, and how trouble things can be and how bad things may get. And as people of God, we got to know that in his hour, the Bible said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of the mouth. God will deliver us out of the mouth. And we got to understand, we're going to go through opposition. We're going to go through struggles. And the Bible said that David said this poor man cried. But the Lord heard him. But when God heard him, he brought him out. He brought him out of his troubles. He didn't leave him in his trouble. He brought him out of trouble. So we have what we need in God. And God give us his word. And his word give us the ability to come out of our situation. The word give us the ability to come up out. It don't, it don't it does not allow us to stay right there. All right. Or the Bible said, being a man, being Christ, he's a new creature. Things have to take place when God come on the scene. Things have to take place when God come on the scene. God, the Bible said, God will not dwell in an unclean temple. God, if the temple is unclean, God will not dwell in it. See, that's why we've got to make sure that, you know, that's why David says, such man. David was a man of all seasons. David talk about repenting. David talk about forgiveness. David talk about he was a man of war. He was a king. David, he was a, he was a musician. David did so 
many things. That's why David can tell us so many things. That's why he can let us know so many things about the Lord. That's why he can say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side. That David knew what God did for him, how what God brought him out. And see, we got to know like David, how God brought him. We got to think about the many times we've been in places in our life. We know it was the Lord that brought us out. We got to know that God is the only one that brought us out. Oh my God, it wasn't our intellect. It wasn't how close we were to God. It was what how close God that this God saw the need. He heard our cry. He heard our petition. And he knew that our heart was right. And that's why Psalm 618 is that if I regard iniquity in my heart, the power said the Lord will not hear me. God will not hear us if our heart's not right. God will not hear us if we got some things going on. In the midst of our lives, he would not hear us. I don't care how much you do at the church. God will not hear us if we have regard iniquity in our heart. God want to make sure that we look into him because he's the only one that's going to help us. The Bible says he's the author and the finish of our faith. He's the only one can do it for us. We the only one can move in this hour. And it says in 46 and 8, it says, come, 46 and 8, son, behold the works of the Lord. We got to remember the works of the Lord. We got to remember how God, God brought us out. Just like he brought the children of Israel out. We got to remember how he brought us out. We got to know that he brought us out with a mighty hand. We got to know that God saw us when we were crying out before him. And he met us at that place when we cried out unto him. And we got to know that even when we cried out in the beginning, we got to continue to cry out now. We cannot stop crying out to God that able to meet our needs. I'm here to let you know God will do it if we just continue to humble ourselves. If we continue to seek your faith. If we continue the power that we continue in his word. Then we are his disciples indeed. We got to continue to do the work of God. You want God to give us the strength we need because see we need strength in this hour that's why there is an hour once oh he said he said he talked about he was once old he was young you know and see that he talked about the faith in life he said you know he said he never seen the right thing he said hey one time i was a young man i, I did I, you know i went out there and took care of the lion and the bear i had that kind of strength I took care of the lion and the bear. I took care of it. I took care of Goliath. When I, I took, I did all those things when I was a young man. Then he said, I'm the old. See, see, old, but see, he said, but still, never seen the righteous forsaken. Hallelujah. Oh, when I was young and had all that strength. Oh, I did some things. Oh, but now I'm old, and I, but yet still I've not seen a righteous forsaken. God would give us the strength that we need. God is your strength in every situation. That's why David knew God like that. Because in the phases of his life, he felt God's presence. Amen. When he called upon the Lord, when his heart was right, that's why he always made sure his heart was right. Yeah. See, we got to always make sure our heart is right. David was known to repent. David was known to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. Oh, that's why he said, if I regard a nigga in my heart, David was concerned about being pure. He's, you know, David was concerned about God, God, God created me a clean heart, a renew, a right spirit in me. Oh, I want to make sure I'm right to serve you. I want to make sure I'm right to live for you, God. I need your strength, God. Lord, because I cannot live this life without your strength, God. Lord, I cannot witness. Then I would tell transgressor, I, I cannot witness until the people, God. Lord, unless I have your spirit, God. I need your strength, God. Don't you know it's going to take God's strength for us to do the work? Yeah. Don't you know it's going to take, we can't do it and I said it's going to take the strength of God. It's going to take his power. It's going to take his authority to help us to do the work for us to be victorious in this hour. Yeah. Don't you know that the enemy let us, in this hour is trying to come against us? That's why Paul tells us that we got to do what? We got to do a hardness yeah. as a good soldier. Oh, we got to do hardness. That's a hard times now. That's a hard situation. We don't know how the enemy come. We don't know who you going to use, how you going to use, we don't know. But the Bible says, do a hardness. Oh, it's hardness. 
That's why people. That's why people don't want to do ministry. That's why sometimes you, I, I, they were talking about, you know, the statistics. How people just drop it. I don't want to do it no more. You know, because they find out in this life, you got to do hardness. You got to do hardness. You, you, you folks can talk about you and they call you when, when, when they got a loved one that they need you to come and see about. They may not even come to your church. You know, I'm mean, gonna let you know, but they will call you. I mean, can you pray? I mean, this is what goes on, but you don't worry about that. Because it's about doing the work of the Lord. It's going to take the strength of God to do what you need to do in this hour and reach this world. Reach this world. You know, you know that? Pray for me. You know, even going to a person's sick bed. Let's get ready to check out. Pray the prayer of faith. Self Jesus Christ of the Lord and Savior. And God raised the person up. And they said they were coming. Hadn't seen them yet. But I'm here to let you know. But you continue to do the work of God. That's it. God is your strength. You don't worry about folks. You just do. Jesus Christ came unto his own. But his own received them not. So you can't be worried about that. You know, but God give me the strength to do the work, God. Lord, David said, Lord, Lord, you're a very present help in a time of trouble. In trouble time. We live in a trouble time right now. But behold, it said back in the earth, behold the works of the Lord. Oh, that what desolation he had made in the earth. Behold what God is able to do. Behold how God, you know, was able to, even in this midst of everything we hear hearing that's going on. God is in the midst of it all. They can only go so far. I know we saw what happened not too long ago. We see how even with the mass shooting, it only goes so far. I'm not. I'm just saying, that man that was had the last mass shooting, that guy was a marksman. They say he was one of the top marksmen in his class. But I'm gonna let you know. But he only went so far. The hand of God that that was enough. And see, you gotta understand, God is in control of every situation. That's why we gotta pray. God, you give us your strength, God. Give us your strength, God. Lord, help me to lean and depend on you. Help me to pray up to you. Help me to know when I see the enemy trying to overtake me in my mind, God. Help me, God, to know, Lord, I need your strength, God. I need your strength, God, to help me come back. This hell I'm in, God. Help me to deal with this war, man. God, I need your strength, God. Oh, God, because I cannot back down, God. The Bible says, if, the, if you come unto God, you must believe. You got to believe who he is. You got to believe what he's able to do. You got to put your hands to the plow. The Bible says, if we put our hands to the plow and look back, we're not fit for the kingdom of God. Got to make sure we understand it's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us that we got to know in this hour that we, you, you know, we got to lift up the blood stain battle. Got to know in this hour that men and God, women got to die for this word, the truth, the scripture. Because we live in a dead time. People don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. Sound doctrine. They don't want the sound doctor. You tell me something that's going to make me feel good. Tell me something that's going to tickle my ears. But I'm here to let you know that in a dead time, the soul that sin it, it shall die. And that's what the word said. And that's what the word always going to be. And sin is what caused Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross of Calvary. And the Bible said he did it because the Father wanted him to do it. I'm paraphrasing. And, but he said, Lord, I come in the fire of the book. He said, I came what's written on me. I came what was written on me to do the will. He came to do the will of his father. And he said this. He said, for I delight to do that will. That's what we got to get to that point. Well, God give us the strength to we delight to do the will of his. Oh, we got to like to do the will of God. See, see, that's the thing about the Bible tells us the word of God. And we live in a day and a time that people have problems doing the work of God. You know what I mean? I'll let you know. You got to know that it's a privilege and an honor that we can do the work of God. Yeah, I mean, I'll let you know. And it's no different. Some people say, you know, it's a privilege, but it takes work. It's called work. It's the work of God. You know, and the Bible tells us how the word of God, how the God word is, is you know, it, you know, sometimes people struggle with it and they think it's hard. But the Bible said the way they said it said the the, the way of a transgressor is hard. 
the way of a church. A person that don't want to do what the word is, it's hard. But we got to understand what the word tells us. That we got to know that when we live in this hour and we see God and we want to be obedient to God, we don't get entangled with the affairs of the world. We don't let the world control us. We, but the Bible tells us in this, this passage we were looking at here, he maketh the wars to cease yeah. in the name verse to the end of the earth. Yeah. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear on, and son of burneth the chariot and fire. That's what God is able to do. Yeah. That God is the God. He, he, he will end wars. Even though we look at these wars, God is the God that's able to end the wars. Yeah. Man can't do it. God is the one that has to do it. God will do it. And we got to look to God. God, you're my strength in this hour. Yeah. So many people say, well, Lord, are we going to make it through this time? God will give us the strength to make it through this time. I'm going to let you know so many people that know we're going to make it through those trip of digits not too long ago. And we know God brought us through those triple digits. Seems like we were going to never see what 40 degrees look like. It seems like we were going to see what, what, what 50 degrees, none of it. But you let your God brought us through it. God is your strength. We got to understand that the Bible tells us that we got to know who he is in this hour. We got to behold the works of the Lord. We got to... Focus on the work of the Lord. We got to delight ourselves on the work of the Lord. Stop looking at your work, but look at the works of the Lord. Yeah. Look at how God brings the sun every day. Look at how he brings the moon every night. Look at the works of the Lord. Look at the works of the Lord. Yeah. Don't focus on what man is trying to show us. Don't get caught up in all the media and things they're trying to show us, but focus on the works of the Lord. Yeah. And as God is, because he's the one going to help us to get through it. He's the one. Oh, he's the one. The glory, everything got to be done through God. Everything got to be done through God. You know, God knows what we need because the Bible says he will perfect those things in us will concern him. Oh, we know what God is able to do and we got to trust him. Be still at what it says here in the 10th verse and know that I'm God. Oh, you got to take your hands off the wheel. Take your hands off the wheel. All right. Stop, stop trying to do your own thing. Stop trying to do what you feel. You know, deny the flesh, but be still. Isn't that what he told the children of Israel when they were concerned about Pharaoh and the chariot? Yes. They were coming and exiting. Isn't that what he told them? He told them to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see what God's going to do. Like God is your strength. I'm telling you all, God is the one going to give you the strength to get through this. Right. Oh, it's only God. Yeah. It's only God because, you know, look at us. To man, it's impossible. That's it. But with God, all things are possible. Yeah. It takes God to, to help us. It takes God to give us what we need. That be still and know that I am God. Did you forget who I am? Did you forget what I did for you? Yeah. Did you forget that miracle I, I, I gave out to you? Did you forget you asked me for to heal your body? Did you forget? Did you remember? You told me. You asked me. You said, Lord, Lord, if you pray me through the financial situation, did you forget that he did that? Did you forget that he, he healed your child, your body? Did you forget what he done? Did you forget how great he is? He showed you. He showed you personally. Be still and know that I am God. Oh, he's God over every situation. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm God. See, you know, you know, not the not the little G, but the big G. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. Don't let. Don't let nobody, don't let no situation, don't let no circumstances try to take away God's authority My over Lord. every child of test that we may Jesus. come in contact with. Yeah. You know, you know, get, you got to make sure our eyes are not on the world and what the world is telling. Get our eyes off of this world that's sinking. Get our eyes off of this world that's shaking. Get our eyes off of this world that's constantly going down, down, down. Pray. Pray, but don't let that get into our spirit. Right. Don't let that get our spirit and remember that who God is. Amen. God is God. your strength. Yeah. God is 
Your strength. Remember who he is. God is your strength. Don't forget. Don't forget the works of the Lord. Don't forget what he's able to do. Saints of God, get your eyes off of this, 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 this world and the torment and all of the, the things that the world is dealing with. Trauma after trauma. Wars and, and rumors of wars. Every time you look around, you're hearing things canceling. We so many things are going on. Get your eyes off the world and, and know who God is. Yeah. In the midst of, and remember that God is your strength. That's what we need in this hour. God is your strength. Let us pray. We thank you for watching this video on today. And at this time, we want to offer you salvation. And what you may ask, well, what is salvation? Salvation is having faith in Jesus Christ and living a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God, a life free from sin. And so if you don't have that assurance on today that you've been saved, that you uh, are living a life pleasing unto God, then we want to offer you that invitation on today um, to have that opportunity to have that assurance to know that you are saved and, and understanding that salvation is not a thing that I, it's not a thing that you have to do outside of just confessing that you are a sinner and that you need a savior. And the Bible lets us know that if you will confess from your mouth that you are a sinner, confess from your mouth that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and God rose him on the third day, then you can be saved. All you have to do is just repeat that prayer and say, God, I'm a, sa I'm a sinner, God, and I need you to save me. And the moment that you ask God to save you, that by the words and by believing in your heart that you are saved. And in that moment that God accepts you as a new creature and he will remember those sins no more. And if you pray that prayer, then after that, you have to pray and ask God that, God, I need you to fill me with your precious Holy Ghost so that I can live a life that is pleasing and acceptable unto you. And if you pray and ask God that simple prayer that God will fill you in that moment with his spirit so that you can live a life free from sin. And if you prayed that prayer, then I invite you, if you're in the Rosenberg area, to come and join us here. We're Rosenberg Full Gospel Holy Temple, 1705 4th Street in the city of Rosenberg, Texas, 77471. So we invite you to come if you're in the area. If you're not, feel free to reach out to any one of our churches in the Full Gospel Holy Temple organization or any church that is preaching the word of God in sincerity in its entirety. And we invite you to plug in to a church that is preaching the word of God so that you can live a life that is pleasing and acceptable to God. God bless you.